Hello friends, welcome to Our Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Are you ready to talk about some crow decor? Let's do it. I know, some of you are saying, oh, I don't like crow decor and I understand. I totally get it. There's other ones that totally, absolutely love crow decor. And I'm one of the ones of the latter. So we're gonna just talk about a little bit about why crow decor. So many cultures throughout the ages have used crows or thought of crows as a message from the divine. Native Americans see the symbol of a crow or a raven as wisdom, transformation, positive change, or intelligence. No matter what you think of crows and ravens, they have a place in primitive country home decor. And I'm here to show you a few different ways that I'm going to use them in some of my decor. Whether you like crows or don't like crows, whether you like to use them in your decor or not, it's been used in a lot of different things. Pillows, uh, signs, even shower curtains. I really like this shower curtain, it is cute. But even though you may not like crows or want to use them in your decor, you can watch this video, get some ideas on how I create these different projects that I'm going to resell in my booth or on Etsy. So whether you use the crow or a bird or a star or a fish or whatever you decide, this will give you some ideas and some techniques on how to, to create different decor for your home or something to resell in your booth or at a market or whatever you, whatever you choose. Crows and ravens aren't just for Halloween anymore. We use them in our home decor all the time, all year long. But let's get started on these four crow projects that I did for you. These adorable little sconces I got at the dump. I know they have a sticker on them from a uh, thrift store, but they're not. They came from the free shack at our dump. They has, there's a free building where people will put things that they don't want anymore, but it's not really necessarily a throwaway item. So I snagged those up, of course, and I got these papers from Zazzle recently. I'll put a link down in the description if you're interested in purchasing the paper. It's a really pretty paper. So I'm showing you here the difference between the decoupage paper with a lighter color underneath it and a darker color underneath it. You can definitely see the difference. This has just, the top paper has printer, white printer paper under it. And you can see that it makes the colors pop and you can even see the gold writing really well. If I use just the brown underneath, uh, it makes it a lot duller and the colors aren't quite as bright, but sometimes that's what you want in uh, your project. I'm using my repurposed paint in the color ivory. I get this from Tractor Supply and it works really well on a lot of my pieces when I need a light color. So I'm adding one coat onto the very back of these sconces. Now that those are dry, I'm going to take some black ink from Waverly. You could use any black, it doesn't really matter, that's just what I have. And I'm gonna take this uh, crackle stamp that I have, this is from IOD, and I'm going to, I think it's called the textures, texture stamp, I believe. Uh, and I'm going to uh, put that in the paint and then stamp the ivory paint over my sconce. And that's gonna give it a crackle look underneath my decoupage paper. You're gonna be able to see through it and see some of that crackle come through and it's gonna make it look even more distressed. It's not a huge difference, but sometimes I like to do this to just make things look a little more aged. I did that on both of my sconces and uh, just gave it a little bit of an aged look. Now I'm just taking my decoupage paper and putting it over the sconce. The lighter color on the sconce really makes it easier to see through the paper also. So I'm just gonna kind of messily 
<laughs> I guess that's a word, um, cut around the sconce with uh, some scissors and try to get fairly close, but not, I, it doesn't have to be perfect. I can uh, kind of touch it up afterwards. And if I have pieces that I don't want, I can always sand those off. And so I just wanted to get it close to the shape. So it makes it a little bit easier to see how this is going to fit on there. So now I'm just taking a little bit of Mod Podge once I trim up my little decoupage paper and I'm going to add that to the sconce and then add my paper to that. Once I have the bottom piece on, I finish up my uh, Mod Podge and Put it underneath the rest of my paper and get that down the best that I can. Now you're going to have a little bit of wrinkles when you do it this way. There are some people that do it a different way where they put it on the Mod Podge, let it dry, and then they add it, uh, you know, they add their paper and then they use like an iron to set it. And I'm sure that works great. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm not, I'm okay with, uh, wrinkles and stuff in this paper it's a primitive piece um, and sometimes when you sand it back those those uh, wrinkles give it a nice aged look so I'm okay with doing that this actually didn't come out too too bad as far as wrinkles there was no bubbles in it that I could find but I definitely sealed it up with the Mod Podge over the top and I let everything dry and then once it was dry I went over it with some sandpaper and I just cleaned up those edges. Now I really like how these sconces look with this stain. I think these would be great the way they are. The only problem with them is that now the paint that I used in behind the paper is showing and I'm not happy with that. So I grabbed my moss paint from Waverly. This is a beautiful green paint. Now this doesn't match exactly, but I will get it so that it matches very well by the end of this. And we're gonna do that by using antique wax. That's, it's just one of my favorite go-tos. So I did one coat, maybe a coat and a half. That half a coat is like a touch up that I use uh, just on parts that kind of look a little thinner on the paint. So I went all around it and I was going to keep that top piece where it holds the candle without any paint on it. So I didn't put any paint on that. So we could still have a little bit of the original candle holder uh, showing and not have that painted. And I think that looks actually pretty good. It's not too, too bad. So I just gently painted around that so that I wouldn't get it all uh, green paint and then I went along once that was dry I grabbed my antique wax and I waxed over all of the green on the sconces both of them now as you can see it's darkened that up it's made it look like a more darker aged green instead of that bright green don't get me wrong I love the color of moss paint but it has its place and it's not in this particular piece. So I'm just going around it with the uh, antique wax and aging it up with it. I go along the edges where I ripped the paper that gives that an aged look as well. So I just gently go around that and then wipe that off. I like to have it a little darker around the edges and then slowly fade it into the middle uh, so that it's a little bit lighter as you get towards the middle. So I did that and it gave it a nice beautiful look. I want to give that gold that's in the paper, the writing, a little nod by adding some rub and buff. This is antique gold. I'll have a link down in the description to Amazon if you're interested in buying some. I think it adds so much to a piece. I have it in the ebony or the black and also in this antique gold. So I have lately been using them quite a bit on my projects. I think they look really good. And I'm going to take a finger and stick it into a little bit of that rub and buff and put that all around the edges. And I think it comes out so nice.
I love finding these recipe boxes at Goodwill, so this is going to be a fun flip. Yes, it does say on that tag $6, but guess what's inside? Look at that! Matching salt and pepper shakers. So I had to pick this up, even though it was $6. I think I can make my money back from it, and I want to do it over a because this is a crow video, I want to do it using some of my crow decoupage paper. I love this hand uh, holder in the top of the lid. When you open it up, it's got that little lip there. And so I was just showing you what it looked like. So I spray painted this black uh, instead of painting it and trying to get it so that it looked nice and smooth. I just took the spray paint and gave it a nice thick coat of black flat black spray paint uh, that and the salt and pepper shakers as well so now i'm going to take that same paper that i used in the previous project and i'll again have a link in the description for that if you are interested in purchasing some for some of your own projects uh, i'm going around it because i want to put a crow on the very front so I'm just using my water pen from Amazon. I will have a link to that if you're interested. It's just water inside of a little pen brush thing that when you put it on the paper, it makes it wet so it's easier to rip. It gives it a more organic look when you rip it. And I just think it looks more worn and aged when you do it that way. So I'm going to, instead of taking the paint and painting it on my, my recipe box and getting this ivory paint all over everything, I'm gonna take this paint and paint the back of the paper. Now when you do this, you need to be very careful that you don't saturate your paper because it will rip while you're putting your, uh, your paint on. Also, you don't wanna move your paper when you're doing this because if you move it where you've already painted, you will get paint on the front side where you don't want it. You only want it on the back. So make sure you keep a finger on that paper so that it won't move around and you just get a nice thin coat. You don't need anything too thick all over the back of that and then set it aside and let it dry. So while it's drying, I'm just gonna take some Mod Podge and put it on the front of my little recipe box here. And now that my paper is dry, I'm gonna stick that right on the top of my Mod Podge and seal that down. Now I don't have a crow big enough to add to my little salt and pepper shakers, but I have this really pretty uh, flower that I want to put on. It's got some sunflowers on there, and I just think it's a just a beautiful color, and it'll match the rest of it because it is from the same paper. So I'm just going to cut two of those. I got a whole bunch of these papers so I can do many projects with them. So I just cut out two of them, one for each salt and pepper shaker, and I'm going to do the same process that I did with the recipe box. I cut it all out, ripped it, uh, and then added paint to the back of it before I added it to my shaker instead of putting the paint on my shaker uh, just, just because it would get paint everywhere. And I didn't really want to see that paint. I wanted it to be on the back of my decoupage paper. So I'm just going to... Um, add that with Mod Podge and then seal it over. And then I did that on both of those shakers. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take my antique wax and go around the edge and just age that paper up where I ripped it. And then I also do it all over the box. I love the look of the antique wax over the black. I think it gives it a nice rich look. So I do that as well. I did the same with the antique wax over the salt and pepper shakers, covered them over and then wiped it back. And I think that gives it a nice aged look. I really like how these came out. So then I'm gonna take my antique gold rub and buff. I'm gonna use that again in this project because again, the paper has got that gold. So I'm gonna 
just add that to my my projects. So I go around the edge of the one of the shakers and then I really like how that looks so I do them both and I go around all the edges like where I would definitely distress it if I was going to distress it back and I didn't distress it back because I didn't want to bring back the wood underneath. I wanted to just do the, use the gold on it and the antique wax. So I did the same with the recipe box. I went around the edges where I normally would distress it with sandpaper and just go around all the edges and just give it give it highlights here and there. Uh, some spots were really thin, other ones were really thick, and it just gives it a nice look. And again, it nods back to that paper where it had the gold writing on it. I really like how that looks, and it gives it a different look, and I think it gives it a vintage look as well. That gold just reminds me of uh, back in the 70s, some of those pieces that had the gold edging. I've had this old window frame in my stash for quite a while. I don't know where I got it, if I thrifted it or if somebody gave it to me or if I found it was a dump find. I'm not really sure, but I really like it. I like the red on one side and the other side was just a stained and I thought that it would look really cool with the red and I'll explain why a little later. You'll see why I did that. I'm going to use a balsa wood crow cutout from 24 Hour Crafts that I ordered and also a grapevine piece that I'm going to take off from this round uh, bale, I guess you'd call it. Uh, I'm not sure where I got this. Could have been from Factory Direct. I don't know. I've had it for quite a while, so I'm not really sure where I got it. But I'll take a look at Factory Direct and leave a link down in the description if you're interested in some of that. So I just cut off a piece. I've tried to figure out how I wanted this on my window frame and I cut off a piece long enough to fit. Then I kind of spread the branches out a little bit so that I could get my staple gun in there and staple it a couple of times and so that it would stay. So um, I did that on the top, the bottom, and the middle. Now you are going to be able to see the staples, but once we put the greenery decorations on it, you're not going to be able to see those at all, so it's not going to really matter how many staples you put in there to get that to hold. So this cutout from 24 Hour Crafts is great. I've gotten these so many times. This is, I think, the 7-inch uh, cut out and I'll have a link down in the description for that. These are really great and they're not very much. 24 Hour Crafts is a, a USA company so made right here in the USA. They cut it out and they get it out in the mail once they get your order within 24 hours. So that's the 24 Hour Crafts uh, why they call it that. So I painted it black and then dried it and sanded it down around the edges, took my antique wax and painted that. Again, I love how this wax uh, looks uh, over the black. It gives it such a nice look. So I'm just showing you here. It browns up those edges really nice and then it just makes that black a little bit richer and I really like how that looks. So then I uh, grabbed some of my greenery. This greenery I got from Primitive, Primitive Star Quilt Shop. I love their greenery. Uh, I just started buying from them recently and I got this kind of like a bush. I'll leave a link down in the description. I It's just like a, a nice big sprig of greenery that I just love. So I'm just going to cut off a few pieces of that and add that to this window down below. Right now I'm just dry, kind of dry fitting these in to make sure what I want and then I'll go back in and glue them once I figure out what I want to use. Now this 
bow I got from burlapfabric.com. Again, link down in the description. I'm going to be linking all night long. <laughs> so um, these are great if you don't want to make bows or if once in a while you just want to be able to pull the strings and have a bow be made. So this one, all you have to do is pull those little ribbons like I showed you there and it just crinkles it all up and makes it into a cute little bow. And I just fluff it and then add it to my piece. So this is why I used the red uh, side of this window because I have this cute little rolling pin with the red ends on it. I picked this up, I think I thrifted it. And I thought this would look really cute with, for a pop of color in amongst the greenery. And it would kind of show that it's a piece to the window like they kind of came together I guess I don't know but I really like how it looked so I added that with a little bit of floral wire tied it on there really tight and now I'm going to add my little bow that I made I did also glue down all of my greenery now that I figured out what I want and now that that's down I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue down my little crow now that I figured out where I want him. I didn't quite want him down yet until I figured out exactly where all my greenery was going to go. And once I got him in there, I did add a little bit more greenery here and there to just fill it in and make it look a little more full. Now I'm going to fill in around the frame where I put the staples in and cover those up with just a little bit more greenery. Just add a little sprig here and there to cover up that those staples and that's all you need to do with this. It's definitely just a simple little cover up that you can do with any project really. Uh, if you have something you want to cover up, add a little bit of Spanish moss or greenery. start out with the lock and key mold from IOD and some cornstarch and I'm going to add that to one of my little molds so that I can do that for this next project. I just put some in there and then tap it off and then grab some of my air dry clay and I'm going to I just kind of knead it a little bit and I'm going to add that to my mold and get a piece of this out. And I just keep working at it until I can get all my clay out. And then once I get it the way I like it and nice and flat, I flip it over and just pop out that, that mold. This works out really well. I actually use the same mold several times. Uh, I just use the ends of it instead of the key hole part. Um, this first part is going to be the keyhole, and then after that, I'm just going to use the ends and add to that. And you'll see later on what I'm talking about. But I'm going to use one of these 24 hour uh, crow, craft crows that I purchased. I got a bunch of them. And so I'm going to use this on here a little bit of wood glue on the back of that clay. And I'm going to add that to my crow. We're just going to give them a little bit of dimension and just some really cool uh, artistic look to this little crow. So as you can see, I took some of the edges and added more clay and just kind of link them all along the little crow. Now I'm going to, I did, uh, I didn't let it dry, but completely dry, but I did take my heat gun and go over it for a few minutes and get like a nice crust layer over the clay so you want to be careful if you do something like this you either want to let it dry 
overnight or at least for a few hours or just kind of heat it up a little bit so that it will um, get a nice crust on it so you can paint it. I was just very careful with it and now I'm once it's dry I'm going to sand back some of that paint along the edges of my crow. Again I want to make him look a little bit distressed so I go along that very gently so I don't hit my air dry clay and now I'm going to take my antique wax and go over my crow. So I'm going to get those in all the details even in the mold and I'm very careful about making sure that I don't push down too hard because I'll lose the detail in my clay. And I think it came out really cute. Now we're going to set that aside to dry and we're going to start with the main piece of this. So the main piece is this plaque that I got. I picked it up for a couple dollars at Goodwill. And then I have this, uh, this music paper and I want to cut this down so it will fit my little plaque. So I'm just using the edges and I'm going along to uh, get a little ridge on the paper so that I can figure out where I want to rip it. This one I'm just going to hand rip along the edges and just make it look uh, just like it's worn off. And then I'm going to use my Mod Podge to seal it on to my board. This paper is really thick so I'm going to go on with a thick Mod Podge so that it will penetrate that paper really well. Once I had the paper all down really good, I went back with the Mod Podge and sealed the top. I went in with my sandpaper and sanded down the edges that were sticking over the edge and also distressing the edges a little bit more because you never can get enough distressing. <laughs> Uh, and then once I did that, I went on with my antique wax and it needed to give this a little bit of age. So I went along the wood and then as I worked my way into onto the paper. Uh, so it just gave it a little swirling action there and I just kind of swirl up more and more into the paper a little bit. And then I go back and wipe it off. And I make sure that I wipe off towards the outside so that it doesn't go into the paper yet. I'm not sure exactly what I was gonna do with that, um, but I do end up going onto the paper more and aging it up more. I just wasn't quite sure. I wanted to see what it looked like before I added too much of the antique wax on the actual paper. So as you can see here, I did quite a bit on the inside and now I'm going to attach my little, my little crow and get him in there so that I know where he's going to sit and then I can continue on with what I'm going to do. So now I'm gonna take some of my gold rub and buff and I wanna bring out the detail in the crow that where I put the clay and uh, I think this works out really, really good. I love how this makes that, um, just all those details pop. And now you can see exactly what I did with uh, the clay, it kind of, it it kind of just brings it forward so that you can see what I was trying to achieve there. So now I'm taking, just going along the edges and adding some rub and buff to the edges, the tail, the feet, the beak, just kind of all over. And then I also go along the wood and the paper and add some gold to that so that it all just kind of looks like it's supposed to be together. I cut off a piece of a doily that I've been using as a scrap and I added that to the corner of the wood and I also made a messy bow, basically just taking some different scrap pieces that I found. I knew that I had the black and tan pieces and then I don't remember what the other one, other pieces were, but just little different pieces that I had, tied them all together, added a little rub and buff to a little button and added that to the middle. And I think this makes this really cute. I also added some greenery around the bow and a jute rope hanger to the back of it to go up over the top. I 
hope you enjoyed my crow projects today. Let me know down in the comments which one out of these four was your favorite if you have one. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and check out the description box for all of the different uh, links that I'll have down there for days <laughs> of all the things that I used in this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.